Edward is the same color as Thomas and the same size as James. He can pull coaches and push freight cars. And he often works as a back engine. But Edward is old and not as as the other engines. So sometimes Edward feels left out. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford came to visit their new summer house. They came on their own private engine called Spencer. Spencer is big and silver and very fast. When Spencer pulled into Knapford, his driver had exciting news for him. You have beaten Gordon's record, he said. Of course, boasted Spencer. I'm faster and finer than all the engines on Sodor put together. Sir Topham Hatt's engines were very cross. Spencer's just a big silver show-off, sniffed Gordon, and everyone agreed. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to the engines. Spencer will take the Duke and Duchess to their summer house. Another engine will take their furniture. Sir Topham Hatt's engine saw the chance for a race. Please, sir, said Thomas, Percy, Gordon, and James all together. May I, May go? I go? You all have other work to do, boomed Sir Topham Hatt. Edward will take the furniture. James and Gordon groaned. Fancy sending a back engine to do an express engine's job, sniffed Gordon. He'll lose the race and let the whole railway down, said James. Thomas and Percy were cross. Edward was their friend. Spencer has a bigger boiler, said Thomas, but that just means more hot air. An honest steamy can beat a puffer any day, added Percy. Edward set off. Slow and steady. We'll do my best, we'll do my best, he puffed. Spencer set off and quickly passed Edward. I've won already, he boasted. And with a whoosh, he was gone. Edward came to the bottom of a steep hill. The freight was he felt very tired. He huffed and he puffed and was soon at the top. He could see Spencer in the distance and chased him at once. Edward raced down the hill. Spencer stopped at Wellsworth Station. The Duke and Duchess wanted to buy tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. Edward teetered into view. Hurry, old boy, laughed Spencer. Can't have you finishing too far behind me. Edward wished he could have a rest too, but the station master and the porters had heard about the race. Hooray for Edward, they cheered. Edward picked up steam and proudly puffed past Spencer. But then the Duke and Duchess finished their and Spencer was off in a flash. He roared past Edward. Fastest and best, fastest and best, he boasted. Edward was nearly out of puff. The furniture felt here than ever. Up ahead, Spencer had to stop. The Duke wanted to take some photographs of the countryside. The Duke set up his camera. Spencer closed his eyes. Nothing to worry about, he said. Gordon was returning to Brendam Docks. He passed Spencer and knew Edward must be losing the race. Edward is a waste of steam, he sniffed. 
But when Gordon passed Edward and saw how hard he was trying, he felt about what he had said. Well done, Edward, he called. You are a credit to the railway. Edward was so happy his boiler tingled. He found Puff he never knew he had. The Duke and Duchess had finished taking photographs and were back on board. Time to go, said Spencer's driver and rang the bell. But nothing happened. Spencer was dreaming of victory. He didn't hear the bell. And he didn't hear Edward puffing past him. Spencer's driver rang the bell again. When Spencer finally opened his eyes, he could see Edward heading towards the sub house. Nearly there, nearly there, he gasped. Spencer took off as fast as he could. But as he reached the siding, his driver ordered him to slow down. These are old tracks and you are a very engine, he said. You must go slowly. Spencer had no choice. He had to slow down. And he trundled slowly down the siding. With every click and every clack, he knew he had lost the race. Edward puffed toward the summer house. I've won, he gasped. I did it. Edward felt like a really useful engine. Hooray, I've won, he cheered loudly. Edward felt like the pride of the Sodor Railway, and he was right.